The hard drive is where your PC stores most of its permanent data. To do that, the data travels from RAM along with software signals that tell the hard drive how to store that data. The hard drive circuits translate those signals into voltage fluctuations. These in turn control the hard drive's moving parts, some of the few moving parts left in the modern computer. Some of the signals control a motor which spins metal coated platters. Your data is actually stored on these platters. Other signals move the read-write heads to read or write data on the platters. This machinery is so precise that a human hair couldn't even pass between the heads in spinning platters. Yet, it all works at terrific speeds. Let's look at what we just saw in slow motion. When a brief pulse of electricity is sent to the read-write head, it flips on a tiny electromagnet for a fraction of a second. The magnet creates a field, which changes the polarity of a tiny, tiny portion of the metal particles which coat each platter's surface. A patterned series of these tiny charged up areas on the disk represents a single bit of data in the binary number system used by computers. Now if the current is sent one way through the read-write head, the area is polarized in one direction. If the current is sent in the opposite direction, the polarization is reversed. How do you get data off the hard disk? Just reverse the process, so it's the particles on the disk that get the current in the read-write head moving. Put together millions of these magnetized segments and you've got a file. Now. The pieces of a single file may be scattered all over a drive's platters, kind of like the mess of papers on your desk. So a special extra file keeps track of where everything is. Don't you wish you had something like that? Removable cartridges combine the speed and storage capacity of a hard drive with the ability to use more than a single disk, as with a floppy drive. Popular types include Bernoulli and SciQuest drives. A magneto-optical drive combines the advantages of a hard drive, which is based on magnetism, and an optical drive such as a CD-ROM, which uses a laser beam to read data. Optical drives can't erase or change data, they're read-only. But a magneto-optical drive gives you the best of both worlds. The high storage capacity of the CD-ROM, plus the ability to change or delete data magnetically. The drive uses a laser beam to pack data into a very small area. Then, the magnetic forces take over. Now, most new PCs today have a single 3.5 inch floppy drive as standard equipment. Hard drives have replaced floppy drives as the main place to store data. But floppy drives are still important for installing new programs, for exchanging data with others, and for backing up files on a hard drive. The floppy drive you see here works with 3.5 inch floppy disks. They're the type most often used to carry new programs, save data, or to move files from one PC to another. The part of the disk we see is actually just the hard plastic shell. The working disk, which is inside, is protected by a sliding metal shutter. This thin inner disk, called the cookie, is coated not with chocolate chips, but with a very thin layer of magnetic material. When you slip the disk into your floppy drive, a system of levers pushes back the metal shutter. The levers also pinch two read-write heads closer so they almost touch the cookie. A motor at the base of the drive spins the cookie based on commands from your PC. The PC also signals another motor to move the read-write heads back and forth over the surface of the disk, so they can read or write data. Before your PC writes data, your drive first checks the Write Protect tab in the corner of the floppy disk. If it is open, light from a tiny diode shines through and strikes a diode on the other side. This diode then says to your PC, Don't write on this disk! But if the tab is closed, no light gets through, and the PC knows it's okay to write data. To write data onto a floppy disk, your PC tells the drive to send tiny pulses of electricity through the heads. The pulses make the heads act like little electromagnets. Each head creates a magnetic field that reaches the surface of the disk. Remember the magnetic coating on the cookie? The magnetic field alters the tiny particles in this coating. If current runs through the heads one way, the particles are arranged with their north and south poles in one direction. 
but if current flows through the heads the opposite way, the polarity reverses. To read data from the disk, the read-write heads move into the same position over the cookie, but this time the process is reversed. The cookie particles create a magnetic field in the coils of wire, and this creates a current in the read-write heads. The disk drive detects this flow of electricity and passes it onto the PC. The PC translates the back and forth current changes into a series of ones and zeros, the binary language of computer data. The five and a quarter inch floppy drive is becoming increasingly rare now that the three and a half inch floppy has become the standard. The main differences between the two are that the five and a quarter inch floppy doesn't have the protective plastic case and it has less storage capacity. There's little need for a five and a quarter inch disk these days except to exchange files with someone using an older computer. A tape backup is an inexpensive and fast way to make copies of all your files. The drive uses a small tape cartridge that can be stored away from your PC for safekeeping. A CD-ROM drive lets you use removable optical disks that contain as much as 650 megabytes of data. Unlike a hard disk or floppy, which read and write data magnetically, data is written to a CD-ROM with a laser beam, and most CD drives cannot write new data to disk. That's why they're called CD-ROM, for compact disk read-only memory. A CD-ROM drive is an essential part of a multimedia PC. Plus, with the right software, you can also use it to play music CDs. Maestro, a little rock with my spreadsheets, if you please. How can a CD-ROM disk hold so much more than a conventional disk? The CD drive reads data with a beam of light so narrow that the information can be squeezed together much tighter. You see, a laser diode creates this concentrated beam of light. The light travels through a prism, then through a lens and magnetic coil that focus the beam even more. On the underside of the compact disc itself are millions of tiny bumps called pits. <laughs> That's right, the bumps are called pits. The same surface has smooth areas called lands. These pits and lands are translated into the binary language of bits and bytes used by the computer. Patterns of pits and lands are laid out along a continuous spiral. As the disc turns, a precise motor keeps the laser beam in place on the path. Where the laser beam hits a pit, the light is scattered. But where it hits a land, the beam is reflected straight back along its original path. The light enters the prism again, but this time it is reflected at a 90 degree angle and strikes a device called a diode. The diode creates an electric pulse each time the light hits it. So when the laser hits a pit, no light bounces back. When it strikes a land, the diode sees the reflection and sends a pulse. These blanks and pulses are sent to the computer which interprets them as a pattern of zeros and ones, in other words, into binary code. <laughs>